guys! Today um, I want to experiment with some texture. I love texture. I love seeing what I can create using stuff I have around the house. Um, I have a bunch of videos actually already that are um, textures with household items. So check that out in the little card up, up there. Up there. <laughs> Today I'm going to work with um, dish soap. I saw some interesting textures being made with dish soap and I wanted to give them a whirl. So I'm going to paint a very basic flat wash. Okay, I'm going to get this wet first. Spray it. I'm using a 140 pound hot press Windsor Newton watercolor paper. I use hot press um, to test because I use hot press when I paint almost exclusively and uh, I want to make sure that my tests react the way they would on the paper that I use most often. So I'm putting a wash down of putting a wash down of permanent magenta. Permanent magenta is going to separate a little bit, so it's going to give a little bit of texture. You can see it separating out a little bit on its own. Big fan, I love permanent magenta. It's such a bright, shiny color. Okay. So now what I want to do is actually see what happens when I use dish detergent and apply it with a variety of different tools. See it pushes away the, this is a, a drawing pen, a ruling pen, also a drawing pen. You can adjust how thick the opening is here by twisting this line here, this uh, wheel, and uh, paint, and you can paint with it, you can use ink in it, um, and the way the ink stays in is through surface tension. Okay, you can see it's, it's pushing away. It's pushing away the paint already. Now keep in mind, I don't know how archival this is going to be, okay? Um, there are issues of longevity to using um, household items. Now one way you can get around that though is by mounting your piece onto a wooden uh, panel with gel medium and then varnishing over top. Okay, now I'm using a toothbrush and just, oops, so flicking. That was way less controlled than I had hoped it would be. Oops, big blob. Okay, let's start it to foam. Which is actually, let me just take a bit over here. That's interesting. Drizzle it on like honey. Okay, the <laughs> that really 
fuzzed up the paper and stuff over there. This is full, so I'm gonna have to get another one. This is um, Fluid 140 Hot Press watercolor paper. This is uh, acid free, but it's not cotton rag. It's a little bit of a less quality, not a little bit. It's considerably less quality than the Arches block that I was using before, but it's still a really good paper. Okay, I'm gonna use the magenta again. This block is gummed on only two sides as opposed to four sides like the arches. So I get a lot more um, give on this when I do really wet and wet work. So I tend to use this block only when I'm doing um, fairly dry work and not a lot of wet washes because it's very goopy, loose and loopy on the side there, which I'm not too fussed about. Okay. so. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so this is an Euler boiler. Um, I have another video with Euler boilers up there as well where I just use water. Um, that is, that's very cool. Now, what I'd like to experiment with as well is letting this dry a little bit um, and then putting this soapy mixture on when it's not so wet because it's spreading so much like I really like the the initial spread that I get and then this goes really crazy and wide um, I'd like to see what happens with a, an almost dry when it's not so wet so I'm gonna have to try it with a different kind of paper Oh, it's really goopy. Okay, I have here, um, this is some paper, extra paper. I'm not sure actually even what this is. It's arches. I don't think it's hot press. I think it's cold press. Might not even be arches. Generally speaking, when you do tests, make sure you use the paper that you're normally painting with. That way you know that the tests are gonna turn out pretty much the same. Um, this is not, so who knows what's gonna happen. So I'm not spraying it first. I'm just brushing the permanent magenta onto the mystery paper. Because I don't want it to be super wet. I should have taped that down, but I didn't. I'm just gonna hold it with my fingers. Okay, so this isn't super wet. Um, and let's see what happens. Okay, it's still a little too wet. Okay, the sheen is starting to come off this. So it's a little more of a controlled, a controlled texture. Now these Euler boilers as well have um, different sized holes, so you can get different um, different sized driplets. Driplets? I guess that's a word. Drops, driplets. So that's pretty cool. That's actually really neat. This would be neat to experiment with um, sedimenting or uh, some of the Daniel Smith colors that really sediment and, and uh, sediment and separate. They would be neat to look at. Like um, these are a couple of them here. This is uh, Rose of Ultramarine, I believe. <sighs> Moon Shadow. Cascade. I can't remember any of these colors. Okay, so that's for that. I'm gonna try some other stuff, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you in a different video. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you the finals. I'm gonna scan all these and uh, and have them at the end. Okay, thanks for watching.